everybody my camera keeps resetting to a very dark and sinister setting right look at this well maybe you can imbue positive energy through the darkness and show people how to use the light i don't know what i like better actually dark light all right, beautiful, sexy people, welcome to the training today. We're glad to have you. If you're just coming in, smash some likes, smash some hearts. Uh, please drop a comment in the box. Let us know that our uh, AV, our audio visual is coming clear, that you can hear us well. Uh, today's training is going to be about how to increase your personal and professional performance. Whoa. Yeah. That sounds intense. I know. So just let us know again that you're out there. If you're coming in, smashing some hearts, some likes, let us know that you can hear us well. And then uh, what's up, what's up? Thank you. And then as you guys are coming in, especially if you are, uh, hold on, let me just pull this up so I can see what's happening in the group as well. Um, hey, Carrie, what's going on? Hey, Carrie. Hi, hi, hi. Good to have you. I know you're just coming hey, off your you training. Here. All right, sorry, I'm just getting my my yeah. stuff here situated as well. Uh, so, do you want to maybe just uh, suggest uh, have them? What's his face? Uh, send them the link. So if they're if this is if you're new here, guys, we use this uh, the software, and uh, you can see the comment boxes on the right. If your name is showing up as Facebook user, you can actually click on this link. It just pulls your name from Facebook and that way, you know, as care, you can see with Carrie, we can actually see the name. So it's just easier for us to keep track. If you guys are asking questions or making comments, we can actually interact with you as you, as opposed to a Facebook user. Um, it makes our lives a lot easier. Um, we just want to welcome you. If you are new to this community, if this is your first time here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we have <clears throat> many, many, I don't even know what our group is at. We're like, where are we at today? 31? 30, we pass 30? Almost 33,000. 33,000. Wow. Guys, you're breaking the first rule of old souls and seekers. Do we not talk. No, just kidding. We don't, we don't have that rule. Talk we about it. Rule. Share. Please share. Um, so if this is your first time here, um, I want to let you know that on Tuesday, every Tuesday at this hour, so wherever you are in the world, this hour, um, 2 p.m. Eastern for me, 11 a.m. Eastern for uh, Pacific Standard for Guy. Um, we do these lives and we do a multitude of different topics. So we're going to tackle every week just a different topic. And you guys can be very interactive with us, ask questions, share insights, connect with people in this amazing community. I think one of the greatest resources that Satori Prime has uh, created has been this amazing community. You have so many like-minded people from all over the world. Uh, we have people that have met in programs that are now legit, like lifelong best friends because just the nature of this work, you, you connect with people at such a deep, deep way, uh, more so than you probably have even like your best friends or family members or anything like that, just because you almost get to see and they get to see aspects of you that you've you've been hiding from yourself and from the world so um please 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 uh dive into the community share ask questions share insights where you're stuck breakthroughs we we love 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 to read it we also have an amazing team that's always in there um answering questions offering support offering resources guy and i have been at this for 11 plus years like we have so many resources for you between podcasts, meditations, uh, different various programs that we offer. Like if you're new here, I know it can be overwhelming because there's so much, but we really make it super, super easy. 
Um, we're going to even share with you later, or we can even now, like you can book a clarity call with one of our team members. And it's just a quick five, 10, 15 minute conversation, kind of depending on where you are. And if you're interested in our programs, they could talk to you about that. If you're interested about just free resources, they can talk to you about that. We make it really, really easy for you guys to plug in and dive in uh, because again, this, this stuff works and it's really important for us and our team to share it. And um, yeah, so just welcome. Yeah, and then uh, just to Elon's point in the meantime, if you're brand new to the community, the, the first and probably most important thing you can take, of, uh, take advantage of here is our uh, meditation practices, okay? And again, like I know for a lot of you guys are like meditation, boring, I don't want to do that. Fine, I get it. For those of you guys who are practice meditators, you know that like a day, a day of meditation and a day without meditation is a stark contrast. Now for many people, meditation is like, uh, at least for Western-minded people, it's been pitched as a way to calm your mind, to relax yourself and you know, like whatever, like, oh, okay, let's just take a few quiet moments for myself here. And there's some truth to that. However, just kind of like the way that yoga is taught in the West as like an exercise, it, like a lot of the spirituality has been beaten out of it. And so uh, meditation is, is an active healing process, okay? It is actually a technology that's built into our body. Like if you've ever been on this planet and you're like, I wish I just had a manual for how all this shit works. Uh, the irony is we have it. It's built into your system. And in order to access it, you need to sit. You need to sit and repose and be and being quiet. And there's a self-revelation that happens through your own awareness as you meditate. Okay. So for a lot of people, when you look at a meditator, it's like they looks like they're doing nothing actively with their body. True. Internally, universes could be moving. Okay. And so the way that we practice meditation here is we call it active healing. And we actually give you a process to do internally. So you're not sitting there just bored trying to quiet your mind because here's the reality. Your mind doesn't get quiet. Your mind doesn't like to be quiet. Some days you'll sit down, it'll be whisper quiet like a lake. Other days it's going to be tumultuous like when it's windy on the ocean. You know, it's just kind of how it goes. We're all human beings having our human experience. And when, sh when shit triggers you, pardon my French, um, you're going to be triggered and you're not going to sit and the mind's going to be like, okay, well, I guess we're sitting now. I'm, I'm going to be quiet. It's going to be upset and you're going to have to listen to it, right? But there's a differentiation in how we listen, how we go into altered state of consciousness, and then what do we do with that? And so this meditation practice starts training you how to do that. That's free, okay? If you did that for 21 days, your life's going to change. It's going to begin changing. If you want that meditation practice, just comment meditation or meditate, whatever is easier for you, in the comment box below. And someone from our team will get you that information so you can start doing that practice. So if you didn't get it in your text or email or whatever, uh, that's a way to do it. So I think enough about that. Um, again, if you guys are excited to be here, please let us know. Like I said, today we're going to talk about um, how to increase your personal and professional performance. And just as a, a point of curiosity, you know, like, what do you guys think? You know, like, I, I want you to actually use your noggins a little bit instead of me and Elon just talking at you because it's always useful, even if we're going to have a, a discussion here about may, maybe new ways to look at it. Humans learn uh, through contrast, okay? And one of the ways we contrast is we have to get an answer within ourselves first. What do I actually think about this, right? And this is not to debate your thoughts or our thoughts are better than your thoughts. We, we have a background of 20 years of working in, in psychology and neurology and energetics and healing and, transform and transform transformative work. And so our view, right, has been, been shaped by that practice of 20 years being in different modalities of work. And, and really the work that we do here is a blending of all these modalities that Elon and I have worked with over the years. And ultimately, like we've whittled it down, right? We're like, okay, we've done a lot of work. What actually worked? What kind of wasted our time? What was just like worked for a little bit, but then didn't work on the long run. And we're, our work here is a blend of what actually works. Like what, and, and not only works, by the way, because we, we say it does work because we have applied this work to thousands of people all over the world and it works 
I can't say for everyone because nothing is ever certain for any individual or person, but at a very high level. Like if a, if a condom works 99.9999% of the time, Elon and I work 99.99% of the time, okay? Um, and, and of course, that matters on how a person approaches their practice, right? And that's why I'm, I'm making that joke. But the point here is, is that like, what do you guys think inhibits yourself or somebody else from taking that next step that next level in their personal or professional performance and and the way that you know that you're struggling in this area is if the circumstances that you're dealing with are are different variations of things that seem similar or the same so it's like uh you go to the next job and there's the you know that same kind of boss that you've had before or like you have the same struggles with money that you've had before or you can't seem to focus right and it's like the same thing same or something similar distracts you over and over again or you get upset about the same type of things these are all be indicators of, of blockages that you may have in terms of your personal and professional performance so like even if you don't answer in the chat box although that would be nice because we we want to have an interaction with you like at least take a moment to answer for yourself like what is it that stops me from taking that next that next step in my performance, okay? And then we'll kind of look at it from, from a different lens, okay? And so uh, today, I wanna, I wanna, um, I was gonna say attack, but that doesn't feel like the right word. I wanna uh, discern to you like a few different ways to look at this. So we have an uh, answer here from uh, Sierra saying distraction, Bobby saying self view, Carrie saying fear. I think fear is fundamental to all of humanity, right? And I think that that really nails it in a big way, not because the other answers I wouldn't say are, are correct, but because fundamentally for most people, what's the underlying source of where they're trying to create things in their life often is fear or scarcity, right? And so like procrastination or being distracted is a, is a way that we like avoid it. Like, oh, that doesn't feel good. Let me, you know, grab that snack. Let me go focus over here, let me go do busy work over there, right? Like, and so this is kind of the underlying pinning. So that's really astute, right? And so we wanna start dealing with, hey, look, if I was less afraid, if I felt safe in my body, if I felt safe on this planet, if I felt safe in my connections, if I felt secure around my finances, not because I have money, because I'm just a secure person, would I start showing up professionally and personally different in my relationships and how I took action in my, in my workspace? So I wanna do this in, in two ways, okay? Because you'll often hear Elon and, and me talking about growing up work and waking up work. And so I wanna give, give you looks from both because growing up work is here's how the mind deals with it. Waking up work is here's the energetics and the awareness behind it and why the mind is doing what it's doing, okay? So the first part I want to give you here, um, and then I'll have Elon chime in a little bit too. And, and honestly, we haven't shared this in a very long time. This is something we used to talk about a lot, which is what Angie's saying, you know, is this procrastination fueled by fatigue, okay? And procrastination can be fueled by lots of different things. Again, mostly it's a really good avoidance strategy, isn't it? Right, like I don't want to deal with that or I don't want to face that or it's uncomfortable when I, so I will do, you know, X, Y, Z, right? And this is very common. Now, when when it comes to just like taking action, right? People are like, oh, I wish, I wish, because if we were to define what performance is for most people, I would say they would define it by my, my ability to take more effective action in my life. And you guys can, if you have a different definition, feel free to throw it in there, right? And so there is this belief in our society, in our culture, that doing more lends us to being more okay like if i just take more action i'm going to get where i want to get to i could tell you from from being an entrepreneur for many many years um you know over over 11 years now um elon and i had a business together before that as well so i don't know 15 16 years of being in in, in business and operating businesses and doing sales and all sorts of stuff that that oftentimes doing more does not lend itself to more results it's very frustrating to find that out as well because it's like when you get very effective and efficient at doing more, you're like, did that really do it? And so we'll talk about uh, talk about that as well. But here's the thing. Most people, when they're procrastinating, here's what's missing. This is the writer downer if you're writing down things, is you don't have a sense of urgency. Okay? That's a really, really big one. 
So there's, there's a lack of a sense of urgency. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means for most people, they're probably in a job that they don't really care too much about. They're not really providing help or service for other people in a way that's meaningful. And so guess what? It's really difficult to generate a story or a conversation within yourself that what I'm doing right now is urgent and is important in any way. And I think for a lot of people, when they first become entrepreneurs, that's a big shift for them, especially if they become entrepreneurs in a business that they care about. Suddenly it's like, oh, my heart in this. There's a sense of urgency to get this out in the world, to self-express, to connect with people, to serve people. And that that changes it. OK, so it's it's crucial whether you're an entrepreneur or even in the workspace and you want to just become more efficient. Maybe you're vying for a pay raise or promotion or something like that. Obviously, what you're you know, boss or administrator or whatever wants to see is that you have a sense of urgency, that you care about what you're doing. And so you can generate a story that will make it so that you want to do that, right? And how do we know this is true? Because, you know, Elon and I will talk to people who want to change their lives, okay? But oftentimes they're they're too scared to make a time or a money investment in themselves. And so they're, they have, unfortunately, I'm going to just be really straight here, like magical thinking, that life just kind of changes on its own. Like something is going to come and intervene. I don't know what they think. Money is going to fall from the sky. Like actually, I think they've they've surveyed people in the past and, and like there are these kind of surveys where they ask people like, how do you think you're going to get wealthy? Okay, these are, pe- these are people's actual like top answers. I think the top answers are, I'll, I'll get famous. I think that's like number one today, especially with social media, the way that it is. Uh, number two you're is, you're I'll, you're yeah, uh, I'll marry into money. That's another one. I will win the lottery. You guys should look at the back of the ticket and see how likely you are to win the lottery. You know, it's, it's not, not very likely. Um, and, and, and for most people, that's, that's their path to increasing wealth, okay? And so like, and this is just physics. It's like an object will continue to move at the rate and, and speed that it's moving unless something else comes to interact with it, right? And then if something interacts with it, it can move into a different direction and speed. That's what personal development is. That's what awareness practices are. It's an, it's, an ins, it's an inner intervention with yourself because if you only have the conditioning that you were given, okay, and you were given this conditioning by your religion, uh, your culture, your society, the country that you're in, your parents, you know, your, your nuclear family, stuff like that, like that was given to you. You didn't consent to it right? Like chances are, if you were born in America, you're probably a Christian. If you were born in India, you're probably like a, a Hindu or a Muslim, right? Like that was given to you. You didn't consent to it. It just happened. Now you may agree with it. You may disagree with it. That's, that's up to you. But, but baseline, that's your view of reality. Personal development is a way to say, you know what? I'm open enough to look at things in new perspectives, to put on different pairs of sunglasses and look And maybe there's a way to look and experience this thing from a different point of view that would create a a better sense within myself. It would create an openness, a sense of urgency that we're talking about here. And so the the metaphor that we've used in the past for people about sense of urgency, they're like, well, I'm too afraid to take that action. I don't want to take that action. I don't have the resources to take that action. Fine. Again, what is normally lacking for that person is a sense of urgency. If, if, you are, if you come to us and you say, my life is in fucking shambles, my relationship is in shambles, I'm struggling over here, I want your help. And we're like, well, here's the action that you take to do that. And you go, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, A, you've come to us to ask us our opinion on what, what, need, what needs to happen after working with many people, but you're not going to take that action. You got to understand. So fear is now dictating that, right? Like some sort of fear. And then there's a lack of sense of urgency on your part because you're, you're telling us it's urgent to get this transformed, but you're not taking action consistent with that. So then there's this lack of sense of urgency again. And so I want you to imagine a person who says they don't have resources on a Monday, like to do, to do a program like ours or to do anything that they want to do. It could be a vacation, it could be some sort of experience that you know, would benefit them in some way. And on a Monday, they say they don't have resources to, to do those things. But on a Tuesday... If you're a parent, let's say your child gets really sick and needs to go to the emergency room, okay? Or let's say that your uh, transmission in your car breaks and you can't get to work, okay? Now, both those things, bringing your child to the hospital and getting the transmission fixed so you can go to work to generate an income are fucking important, would you say? (laughs) That's accurate, right? And so, like, you're going to have on Tuesday 
a real sense of urgency to get very resourceful very quickly. And in those situations, people figure out ways to make it work. They'll, they'll find the money, they'll find the time, they'll find the resources, whether they have to beg, borrow, or steal, right? And that's and that humans are, are very uh, imaginative when they need to be, right? Like uh, at, at the level of personal and at the level of scale in society as well. We become very creative when, when push comes to shove. Human beings are, have a lot of ingenuity. Again, all a sense of urgency. And so the, the takeaway here is how can you create a sense of urgency in the areas of your life that you say matter most to you and you want to have them be transformed. And if you can't generate a story within yourself to create that sense of urgency, chances are you are going to be stuck in the same type of life that you've had up until now. Okay. So that at the level of mind is a change that we can make or a question we can ask ourselves is how do I generate this sense of urgency within myself? What do I tell myself every single day. And the other thing that we want to recognize, and then I'll pass this over to Elon to kind of talk more about the, the energetic component of it, is that the mind doesn't like friction. It doesn't like resistance. The mind is, the mind is inherently lazy. And, and what I mean by that is it's, it's really, it's like, it's not like lazy and like a lazy, like a couch potato lazy. It's like lazy in terms of it wants to use its energy efficiently. And the way that it does that is it, it always looks for the path of least resistance. Okay, because your your brain, believe it or not, is the is the hungriest organ in your body. It is the the number one organ that, that uses the calories in your body more than anything else, more than your legs, more than anything else. You're very very calorically hungry organ, and so what we want to recognize with this with this mind is that it doesn't like to do things that appear hard, right? So when we're trying to like rehabituate something, for example, let's say you buy. Uh, like supplements that are good for you or green powder or something like that, but you throw them in the back of the cabinet where it's hard for you to see. And you don't open that cabinet up often throughout the day. Like, you know, you it's like you have to walk over and get water and then remember, oh shit, I'm my green juice and you got to turn, open it, find it in the back and put it in. You're going to have a really, really hard time habituating that. Okay. It's just not going to work for you because you're not, your mind is not used to looking for that thing. And this is how most people try to rehabituate themselves. They, they want, they have willpower for a few days. They can remember, but then life happens. They get distracted, fear, whatever, right? Like comes into their life and it's like, oh, that thing disappears. And then three months later, you open that cabinet. You're like, oh yeah, that thing I was supposed to be doing regularly. Then you recommit to it and same thing. And you kind of disappoint yourself now. So how do I make something like that efficient and easy? Well, okay. Let's say I wanted to have grow this habit of drinking green powder every day so I can have antioxidants. Okay. Well, what is something that you do do every day? <laughs> something that you do do every day i don't do do every day yeah. but anyway so like something that you easily do every day you tie your shoes you brush your teeth you put on deodorant you know like things that you've habituated that you know you're not going to forget to do guess what you put that green powder or whatever it is that you need to remember by your toothbrush by your shoes by something that you know you're going to interact with every single day you're never going to forget to do that thing once it becomes a habit and you just know yourself, just like brushing your teeth, that's a habit. Now you can kind of, you can move it out of sight and you're just going to remember, oh shit, you know, I brush my teeth and then I go drink my green juice. So that, that probably kind of tastes gross, but you know, you, you get my point here. And so we want to create pathways of as little resistance for our brain as possible when we're trying to create a new habit, because otherwise chances are you're just never going to do that. Right. It doesn't matter how many reminders you put, what you put in your calendar, how many alarms go off. It might work for a few days, but when those alarms start going off all the time, after a while, your brain just goes like, it just kind of like mutes it. It doesn't want to deal with it. And so these are these are two really important facets, at, at least when we're talking about taking action consistent with what we want. These are the ways that we can deal with it. Now, what we want to talk about is what Carrie pointed out, which is what lives in the body. Okay, and I'll just kind of tee Elon up here. We think that we need to rehabituate and condition our minds. And like we just kind of talked about, this is actually very challenging. It's a very labor intensive type of process to rehabituate a thought. Because you, how many times have you had that thought? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, of thousands, thousands of times. And like any athlete, when you do something over and over and over again, it just becomes the natural, the natural way you do it. That's why athletes swing the bat and throw that ball and catch the ball a million times because then they just it just becomes habit to do it that way right so your persona your identity your ego 
It is a series of all this conditioning that you were given, beliefs and ideas that you then rehabituated inside yourself and reenacted over and over and over and over again until they just became the natural way to, to do things. It seems like the right and only way to do things. And then, of course, if anybody says anything that's contrary to that, it's a direct threat to the fundamentals of who you believe to be. And at the level of neurology and biology, the chemicals that get released in the brain when somebody uh, tells you that you're wrong is literally the same thing as a knife coming at your face. And this is why people argue and condemn other people that don't believe and think like them. They li literally can't help themselves because it's, it's that deeply ingrained in our biology. And so that part is very challenging. But what we want to understand, what Elon's going to talk about here, is that your thoughts are actually a, re a, a, they are a symptom they are a reaction to actually what's happening in, inside of you, your, ener your energy in your biology. And so if we want to go underneath that, and actually this is like a hack. This is the, this is the quick way. We want to go directly to the source of what's actually happening in the body so that the mind can stop being reactive in the way that it has. Because that's the only thing it's reacting to is actually what's happening in the body. So I'll let Elon kind of explain that aspect of it to, your, to you guys. So I, can I just answer this other quick question first before, sure. before we do that? Uh, I don't know who Facebook user is, but Facebook user that wrote, I'd like to differentiate between a sense of urgency and impatience. I think that's a really, who is it? Vicky Katz. Vicky Katz. Okay, cool. So um, I think they're two, it, it, to me, they land as two completely different things. What I mean by that is, how many of you by a show of hand, not a show of hands because I can't see your hands, how many of you by saying yes or I in the comment box, uh, you know that you're an impatient person. Like you want things to have happened yesterday, right? I for one am very impatient, like <laughs> highly impatient. And part of my impatience came from when I was very young, for whatever reason, I had the gift of picking things up very, very quickly. Like I could just pick up a sport or a hobby or whatever it is. And I got good at something very, very fast, faster than most, let's say, right? Here's the flip side of that skill set, right? Anything, and I mean anything that I picked up and I wasn't better or picked it up faster than most, guess what I did? I stopped doing it. I was just like, eh, it's not for me, right? Because there were so many other things. And it wasn't, the, even the, the sentence, as I say it now, it's kind of funny to me. Like, I justified it and was like, oh, it's not for me. But really, really, what was underneath that, and this is the part that I think guy wants me to talk about. It's like, what was underneath that was a part that felt not good enough. Now, whatever your version is, like the way I express not good enough is, I felt like a loser. And so anytime that that part of me, the not good enough part, or the I'm a loser part, got, I got hit, I needed to create some sort of justification or some sort of method to get through that so I didn't actually feel that pain. And I'll play it out for you guys. So like with, with things that I didn't excel at right away, right? My, my justification was like, nah, it's not for me. Satori Prime is the first time ever in my life that for the guys like, I don't know, for any of you that started a business, like, listen, starting a business is no joke, right? You're going to have incredible highs. You're also going to have incredible lows. There's going to be, we, we could have bankrupt this company. We nearly did bankrupt this company handful of times, if not more, you know, we, we had so many times where we were like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, why are we doing this? This shit doesn't matter, right? Like you go through all these cycles. I don't matter. I, again, I'm a loser. No one to believe me. You, like we, all of it, right? This is the first time ever that I stuck through something while sucking ass in the beginning. <laughs> like so bad 
that I didn't know which way was up and which way was down. I didn't know if we were succeeding or losing. All I knew is that I was putting in all this effort and I could see zero results out there in the real world. Like it was just so much work and so much zero results. Now, my impatience part, the part that Vicky was bringing up before, like, you kidding me? I had never done anything with this much energy and enthusiasm and hours spent to not see results and still wake up the next morning and go at it again. It took everything I had to do that. So again, I, I, I want to just answer that piece, which is like, to me, urgency and impatience have nothing to do with anything. Urgency is my house was being foreclosed on when, when we started Satori Prime. I was living on unemployment checks, which by the way, we ended up using for our marketing budget. Um, I had a child that was on the way, right? Like all this stuff was happening. There was plenty of urgency and there was tons of impatience right along with it. Like the two can live here at the same place and tend to just because I think the human mind is always looking for things to happen faster. And hopefully, as I can see, some of you guys relate to the, the way that the impatience kind of is this, uh, there's something underneath that, right? So when we talk about performance, okay, really like if we're trying to perform on top of all of these inadequate parts, you're basically going to run sprint full forward while having a huge parachute attached to you. And then you feel like nothing's actually moving forward because you haven't actually handled or dealt with all the stuff that's underneath the surface and where most personal development tells you to go. And I had a, a, a client just reach out to me yesterday. He's like, dude, I need help. Cause like all this personal development stuff just keeps sounding the same. I've tried it all and it just keeps putting me into the same positions over and over and over. And the reason that is, is because personal development, that the stuff that was created in the 1970s, that's, you know, kind of being regurgitated by everyone else out there. It all built off the same concept. It's all built off the concept of reframing, right? This neuro-linguistic programming, NLP for short. It's all, how do you shift the stories in your mind to, well, first realize that they're stories, then realize that you can shift them so that you can what? Feel empowered to stay in action so that you can keep moving forward. However, if that part for me, let's just talk from my example. If the I'm a loser, I'm not good enough part is in there. And I'm now telling myself, no, 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 I am good enough because if I just switch this story to that, then I can keep moving forward. Guess what happens to that part inside? For any of you guys that have kids, if your kid tells you that they got scared or sad or upset, and the first response you have to that child is, no, 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 it, it wasn't like that. It, that's not how it is. This is how it is. How does that go? If you basically fully dismiss their experience of sad or scared or whatever it is, you just dismiss it and tell them, no, 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 you don't need to think about it that way. Think about it this way. Does it work? Is the kid's like, oh, thanks, dad, or thanks, mom. That was really helpful. Now I can go and, you know, sleep in my bed again and not be scared. Or now I can go say hi to those kids. No, that is literally never how it happens. They get more upset. They get more into that pattern or whatever it is that they're doing, right? Yeah, I see a bunch of like, for those who are parents, like, right? Like if you go about that, doesn't it put them more and more and more into this pattern? So I want you to kind of create that almost same visualization. There's you, this, this adult you, you know, you're in this big body, whatever. But inside of you are all these little children. 
you, like little versions of you that got trapped in time, three-year-old you, four-year-old you, five-year-old you, six-year-old you, even younger, right? If every time one of them inside peeks its head out and goes, I'm so scared right now. And your response is, there's nothing to be scared about. Don't worry about it. It's not this, it's this. The same way that you see what happens with your kids in out here is the same thing that's happening inside. You are dismissing this emotional impulse. You are trying to like, I'm not going to look at it, which in essence does what? It aggravates that part of you even more. That part gets even more activated. And now you're trying to go out and produce these amazing results, but inside there's a part that's fighting you at every step of the way. Every step of the way that that part is wanting to pull you back because it is terrified of where you are wanting to go. And whether you do this one time, a hundred times, a million times, whatever it is, like you cannot lie and you cannot convince these internal parts of anything else. So back to the kid, right? Like now we're going external because I really want you to get this. It feels like you guys are, are relating to that analogy. So your, your child comes to you and they're really, really sad or really, really scared. What does work? What does work as a parent when you're there? Is it trying to logic them? Is it trying to convince them otherwise? No, we know that that doesn't work, right? So what does work? What does work is you get down onto their level and you actually let them share with you and you hear their full experience. In fact, you let them have their full experience. Because what this child needs to know more than anything else, you don't need to fix their problem. You don't need to change their reality. The, the, I just laugh like, I don't know if this happens in other cultures, but Russians, like Russian Jews, this is the way. If a kid cries, you know what they do? They give him a piece of candy. Oof. If a kid's upset or whatever, the way to stop the kid from crying is to give the kid a piece of candy. And then we wonder why these kids are now 30 and 35 and 40 and 55 and have the same exact reaction. They're sad. They need something sweet. Because that's what was programmed, right? So what works is, yeah, acknowledging, caring, listening for this child. Sierra said it beautifully. And so in the same way that you do that with your child out there, what if you found ways to actually do it internally? To be able to hold this one inside who's freaking out. Because I'd imagine, you know, we're talking about personal and professional performance, like anything that you want to achieve in your life, personally or professionally, if you already had the tools to do it, you'd already be doing it. You guys get that? Like the goals that you want to achieve, you've never achieved before. And if you've never achieved something before, meaning like you've never played in that land before, whether it's, you know, six pack abs or a loving relationship or more money or starting a new business, like to your internal parts, that is the scary ass black void of the unknown which it, they are trying to guide you away from your entire lives. And so what Guy said in the beginning, like urgency is what tends to bring us to these places because it has to highlight these things. You know, like I tell people all the time, health to me and Guy, as you can probably see, is very important. No one stands over us and goes, did you take your supplements today? Did you work out today? Are you taking care of your body? No, it is innate. And you know why? Because as we've done more of this work, we realized that it's not just a mental thing and it's not just an energetic thing, but as you do more energetic work, like the physical body needs to be strong also to hold and contain this much energy. 
It's just very important to us. But for some people, the only way that they get their health in order is they go to a doctor and the doctor says, you have blank diagnosis. And because of blank diagnosis, you could no longer drink or eat sugar or do all of these things. Guess what? Is there urgency now in their life? Urgency is going to be created one way or the other. You're either going to be able to create it internally or it will get created externally for you. And I promise you, usually the external ones are not pleasant. Anywhere where there's not balance in your life, where, where, where there's not resource or balance, inevitably is going to show up as some kind of rupture or disease, whether it's physical or emotional or mental or whatever it might be. And, you know, what I what I tell people is like, you know, if you're 30 or 40 years old and you've had friends who are, you know, whatever, don't really take care of themselves, maybe they party too much. And again, Bill and I are, are as guilty of anybody as destructive behavior in our lives, right? Like we've done we've done all those things. But it's like, why why is it you start hearing so many stories of people who seemed really healthy or really well or really put together or really successful, but in their 30s or 40s start having panic attacks? Or start having midlife crises because ultimately when we when we spend a lifetime avoiding through our conditioning right like we said elon, elon somebody else said here uh alex said about something to eat like that's very cultural like food as a way to create safety right now, i always say there's a reason when there's a party everyone always gravitates to the kitchen first because everyone walks into the party they're uncomfortable and what is what have we been trained that food will relax you so it's like something to put in your hand something to you know, do it with your hands. And it's like everyone eats first and then everyone kind of settles down and we can like hang out and stuff. But the, the, the thing is, it's like if you spend a lifetime avoiding this discomfort in your body, which is true for most people, by the way, you're not, you're not in it alone. This is the whole of humanity right now that we're talking about, right? So this discomfort that's inside, but the, the conditioning that you were taught was like take a piece of candy, which is avoid your experience. And that's habituated into you. What has happened? When you're not performing, when you're not feeling connected, when you're not healthy, it's not like the, you're like, all right, let me go look at this discomfort. This is awesome. The conditioning is don't look, don't deal with that. Now, now the body is an incredible tool, right? Like America, I don't think we can deny we have an obesity problem here. Okay. There's a lot of people who are extremely overweight and unhealthy and we can, we can debate body positivity and all the other things that come around with that. But like, I don't want to do that. I just want to like, factually, there is a lot of overweight, unhealthy people in this country. Okay. Now notice that the body can maintain itself for a very long period of time, 30, 40 years overweight. Okay. But I heard Bill Marcy the other day, he goes, you don't see a lot of, you don't see a lot of fat 90 year olds. Do you? There's only so much the body can do to avoid a problem before it starts creating ruptures in the system that you can't avoid. Either you have to deal with, or they're going to just kill you. Now, if that's happening with at the level of food, you cannot separate the physical from the energetic or the awareness. It all works together. The body-mind connection, you know, the gut-heart-mind connection, like all that exists together. So it's like if your gut is out of balance, trust me, your heart and your mind is going to be out of balance too. It's like we are a system of, of neutrality and balance. So the whole of the universe works. Anything that's not in balance and neutrality, forces get applied to bring it back to neutrality. So if you are if you are avoiding things in your life like discomfort, the the mechanism, all of it, the quantum physics of it is set up to try to correct that and bring it back to neutrality. And so it has to intervene so that you recognize it in order for that to happen. Okay? Like one of my one of my favorite things to tell people is like, you've all been to the doctor where they like knock you with the little hammer and your knee pops up, right? It's like this unconscious knee-jerk response, right? And I didn't really know why that happened. I just assumed it was like the vibration of the hammer like hitting the thing and it goes up, but that's not the case. Here's how intelligent the body is. Where they hit you with a hammer is a soft piece of tissue, okay? Very soft piece of tissue. And if your knee didn't pop up, that piece of tissue would actually tear or rip completely and you would lose some function in your knee. And so the intelligence of the body is, I'm going to react to create safety. I'm going to react to create safety. And they know if they hit that part and your knee doesn't pop up, that it's already ripped. That's how they check for that. And so everything is built this way in your body. And pain, when you're experiencing pain, it's not like your body is trying to work against you. It's trying to tell you, 
It's sending signals to your body, limit mobility, because if you have full mobility, you're going to hurt more. Like it's going to create more pain in your body. There's always a feedback system. That's my point here. Okay. And so you can wait for those moments in your life, or you can actually become consciously aware of this system and then start participating with it and actually bring everything back into this neutrality and balance. Now, you kind of said this before, and Brian didn't mean to take your thunder, but it's like, if the underlying precept that most people's conditioning is fear, scarcity, aloneness, lack of faith in oneself, like lack of self-worth, if any of these are ringing true for you, because I think they ring true for most of us, okay, then what is the foundation from which you're living your life from? Where are you sourcing your actions, your thoughts, your emotions from? They're all being sourced from that. Like if you're the, you know, the grade A worrier that worries about everything, it's like that person generally believes that worrying is somehow going to make everything better. Worry, what was it? That line from Baz Luhrmann said, I think worrying is the same as chewing bubble gum to try to solve arithmetic. That's all it is. In that person's mind, it's like their way of trying to create safety, but does it create safety? Does it change anything about the underpinnings, the foundation from which they live their life, how they take actions consistent with that? Nothing. Nothing will change. Nothing will change for that individual. They will source their life from worry and fear. And so you can either try to re rehabituate that, which is basically like spitting into an ocean, right? Because that's what's habituated into that person. Or you can learn how to go within and actually metabolize that energy so that this part of you that worries no longer has to. Because it's just a reaction to this energetic source in your body. And so the, the, the whole of our work, the crux of what we do here, is we definitely deal with the mindset stuff. Because we understand that that's fundamental to a person understanding how the mind works and how it generates reality. And if you don't understand that you're always going to be at the whim of it doing it instead of you being at the source of what it's doing, okay? And so for a lot of people, they can go do really good healing work, metabolize this energy in their body, clear it out, but the mind is still habituated. And so it pulls these things from the past and keeps bringing them into the present. And we call that reenactment. That's when the brain just keeps reenacting stuff. And so if you're not aware of the mindset pieces and self-awareness and mindfulness, chances are you're just going to, even if you do great healing work, is you're going to recreate that, the same trauma. And this is why a lot of people go to great energy healers or Reiki or everything else. They feel amazing after a session, but a few days later, they're right back to where they were. Nothing's changed. Why? Because the, the mind is reenacting. The energy starts moving the same way it was before and they come back. And so they're like basically taking one step forward and two steps back, one step forward and two steps back. And they don't really feel like they're getting anywhere. And so we really want to marry the two. Ultimately, though, the deep healing work is really learning how to use awareness, how to come out of the conditioned mind, right? We've been talking about the conditioned mind a lot here. It's like, how do I exit the conditioned mind so that I can see from my awareness outside and unmerge and separate from my, my conditioning, okay? And we call that the non-localized mind, okay? So if you want to think again, conditioned mind is localized, it's right here. Again, this is all your conditioning, all the things that you've been led to believe, your percent personality identification, blah, 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 blah. And then there is learning how to use meditation and awareness practices to actually come out non-localized, unconditioned mind. And this is just pure awareness. Call it this an awakened awareness process. Okay. And from there, when we look at what's happening internally in our system, this allows for a few things to happen. It allows for you to learn how to regulate your own nervous system, down-regulate parasympathetic nervous system response. So we go into a rest and digest or a repose, like a restful state in the body. The body cannot metabolize energy, this kind of energy, unless it's in a state of rest. Okay, there's a reason when you go see like a hypnotist, they tell you, you know, uh, you know relax, relax, rest, rest, rest. Why? Because they're taking, they're essentially manipulating and taking advantage that you, they understand in order to do the healing work, you need to go into a relaxed state. In order for, inf you know, information to get in through the unconscious part of you, you need to go into a relaxed state. And so learning how to effectively do this on your own. And I don't know about you guys, but how many of you guys were taught by your parents how to downregulate your nervous system? Anybody? Anybody have conversations about downregulating their nervous system at the dinner table? 
or while talking about homework or when you're outside with dear old dad cutting down a tree? Was he like, hey, we're going to teach you how to downregulate your nervous system now? Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you didn't have that training, I didn't have that training. But we have a nervous system. We have consciousness and awareness, right? We have energy. But yet none of us have spent a, a, a lick of time learning that as we grew up. And do you think that it would be useful for you to investigate that? Because that is what you are at the core tenant of who and what you are is this consciousness. Would it be useful then to learn something about it and do practices that enable you to actually downregulate your nervous system so that you're not living from a source of fear and scarcity and actually starting to source your life from well-being and safety? And that's really the question that I want to leave you guys with is what does life look like when who you are, the source of who you are, is not worry, fear, scarcity, lack of self-worth. Instead, instead, you train your nervous system to feel well, you train your system to feel safe, to, to have belief in yourself, all these things. And now all the actions you're taking, the connections that you're having in your personal and professional life are being sourced from that energy. Would your life look different? And we can tell you the answer to that is yes. <laughs> the answer to that is unequivocally, yes. This is why I said 99.99% of the time you do these practices, unequivocally, your life is going to transform, change, heal, and your performance is going to massively increase. And by the way, not because you're doing more, because the energy behind what you're doing is now effective, is creating that which what you, is creating that which what you want or is in greater alignment to what you want. Okay, because nobody can guarantee what any any results people are going to get. However, we know that when people source action from this type of energy, their life naturally changes, relationships change, health becomes easier. And so life takes on a breath of just being easier. It's not about doing more because doing is has always been a function of your beingness. We're really looking at cleaning up that beingness so that the work that we're doing is much more effective and in alignment with that which we want in our lives. Okay. And so uh, a few things, we'll kind of begin to wrap it up there, but a few things. Number one, like Elon mentioned, if you are enjoying these conversations, you're like, shit, I'm in this part of my life. Like we talked about having a sense of urgency. If you have a sense of urgency to transform your life, then the next action for you is to not just keep coming back to these Tuesday lives, although you're welcome to do that, is actually take some action and come be in some type of program with us. And the way that you can find out what fits for you is by having a call with our team. You can see right above my head probably, or depending on what platform you're on watching this, there's a link up there called callsatori.com. You click on that. We have a complimentary free 15 minute call that you can do with our team. And we don't sell you anything on this call unless you beg us to sell you something on this call. Um, some, some people do because they're like, I just want to get started. Great. But this is really a call for you to explore. So you can feel nice and relaxed. That's why we tell our team no sales on this call. Just explore, have a conversation with our team. And there's a few things you want to figure out on this call. Number one, is it, is this work for me? And do I want to do this work? Yes or no. And number two is, do I have the, the resources and means, time, money, et cetera, to, to do this work? And we can help you navigate that as well, depending on you know different situations that you're in. Some of you guys are loaded. Some of you guys are can't rub two pennies together. I'm going to tell you, truth be told, if you can't rub two pennies together, like you can't be in any of our advanced work. Okay. Like you got to go get that handled. By the way, we do have a program even for that around money. Okay. And it's, we made it very inexpensive because we understand that people who are having money problems can't pay a lot for programs. So even if you, even if that's all you get from that call, it's going to be very valuable for you. Okay. And if then you are a yes to doing this work, we'll set you up with another call. And then you guys can have a conversation about what the programs and things of that nature look like. So again, you can you can either say contact me in the chat box below and then someone from our team will reach out to you or go to callsatori.com. Last thing I want to mention here is that this Saturday and Sunday, we actually have our uh, two-day live intensive, the Intuitive Mind live event coming up. Bro, are you going to still do the, the deal with them that we talked about? Okay, so Elon's going to do you a, a huge solid. They have to talk to you. Is that the case? How did you want to do that? Uh, I'll, I'm going to post a video later today. Uh, you guys can either, I'll post it here. Uh, I'll post it on Instagram and on my Facebook wall as well. And um, yeah, and just look out for that. And if you want, I'm going to make you a really cool special offer. Cool. So the event is coming up the Saturday and Sunday. Guys, this event, not only is it 
extremely approachable financially, but it's life altering. Okay, like everything we're talking about here, it is it is giving you these practices and a community to practice it with. And we promise you those two days will be some of the most eye-opening and potentially heart-opening experiences of your entire life. Okay, that's a big, bold promise. And again, Elon and I have done like, I don't know, 15, 16 rounds of this now. Regularly, we hear from people that was one of the most exquisite experiences of my entire life. They are fucking amazing. And you also get to be there with a bunch of our advanced students who are holding the field. And I'm telling you, it's revelatory. Like you will learn more about awareness and energy in two days than you have learned in your entire life. Guaranteed, full stop, okay? So if you want tickets for that program, you can go to intuitivemind.live to pick them up. Elon's gonna do some special in the group later on today. So if you wanna wait, you can, but you know, go, go get after it. And the moment you buy, uh, you enroll in that program, we send you six hours of pre-training that we don't have to do. However, it's strongly recommended that you do it. And so you have enough time between now and Saturday to do that training and do it comfortably, even just like an hour or two a day. And then you're gonna be way more well prepared for the uh, weekend. However, if you can't fit that in, but you still wanna to come to the weekend, still come to the weekend. It's gonna blow blow your gaskets, okay? So again, those are your two opportunities. Call satori.com, book a call, or come to uh, this weekend's live event and actually spend a, a good amount of time with Elon and myself in a pretty intimate setting with some awesome people, okay? We will leave it at that. Uh, guys, thank you as always for your uh, awareness and attention. We know that that's your uh, number one asset and resource. We appreciate you giving that to us. Love you very much. We hope to be able to uh, serve the whole of you that are interested. Remember, if you want to change your life, have a sense of urgency. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.